All right, welcome to OpenStack Summit. Let's get this started. Uh, this is a talk on Triple O, which is also OpenStack on OpenStack. I myself am Clint Byram. I work for Hewlett Packard in the, uh, in the Converged Cloud division on OpenStack. We are trying to bring OpenStack of a, of a certain kind to, to all of our HP's customers. And um, specifically, my team works on open source Primarily, uh, we started the Triple O project uh, just over a year and a half ago, um, and we've grown from about five internal employees to over 20 now. And we've also gathered uh, contributions from Red Hat, from SUSE, and uh, several other community members, including Debian. What I'm going to talk about today is about some of the tools in Triple O. Um, this is not a, an overview. We've done a, a enough of those, and you can find those out there on the web. But uh, specifically in Triple O, we, we developed a, um, a certain ethos about what we do, which is that we, 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 do, we use tools that follow the Unix model. So I'm going to talk a little bit about those and the fact that those are not just useful for deploying OpenStack, which is what OpenStack on OpenStack is originally designed for, but they're also, uh, through the virtuous cycle of just improving tools, they should be useful for deploying any application on OpenStack. So, the first thing that I like to make sure that we all agree on is what a cloud is. And this slide uh, is, is an excellent demonstration of, of sort of what OpenStack believes a cloud is. This is an infrastructure as a service component diagram. So you have uh, a user interface over there that's, that's controlling access to storage, to compute, to networking, and, uh, and, and to, to the overall cloud experience through an API. Now, what's interesting to, to us about this and the reason that we made OpenStack on OpenStack, or Triple O, is that these are the exact same things that underlie the cloud and that they're also exposed by the cloud. So if we can use these things to manage an application, well, what's more complex than OpenStack? So if you look at this slide here, you have a, a massive application, interdependencies, you have configuration data that needs to flow in multiple directions these are all things that happen in really complex cloud applications. And the tools that are available out there, they're fantastic. You know, uh, people are grabbing Chef and Puppet and they're making it happen with OpenStack and, and we think that's amazing. But we, we looked out there, what are cloud application users, you know, cloud users like, like big ones like Netflix and Google who have been doing it for a while, what are they doing? Because they're getting really good at deploying complex applications that may have unreliable clouds underneath them and that have interdependencies and that go, need to go fast. Because one thing about OpenStack, as they said in the keynotes today, fast, fast, or fast. There's no good or cheap anymore. It's all just fast. So we looked at what all those houses are doing, and a big part of what they're doing is continuous delivery. So that means that whatever you've produced as an organization is available. It's, it's deliver, you can deliver that at any time. And in continuous delivery, and that's, that's not necessarily continuous integration, that's just one part of it, but you, you, ha you need to have really robust testing. And one of the ways that you help make testing work is by shrinking the domain of each tool. So we looked at this, this diagram, and this is the path that a change takes to go through OpenStack. We wanted to be able to have that be the same for developing OpenStack, for developing an OpenStack application, and for going through and actually running a cloud. These should be the same thing. This is also embracing DevOps, where you have your developers are writing things that make things more robust for ops rather than things that go at odds with the robustness that ops wants. So you have a, a strong testing paradigm. Another important thing that we use in Triple O, we refer to this talk a lot, so I've added a link to it uh, by Hickey. It, it's called Simple Made Easy, and it helps explain a lot of what you'll see if you, if you dive really deep into Triple O, which is that we're really, really careful about not expanding the scope of any one piece of Triple O outside of the one thing it's supposed to do well. And the reason for that is that it's, it's really nice to have easy tools, tools that do a lot of things so you don't have to go and get another tool and learn how to use it and read the manual. But in fact, that just gets you going faster at the beginning. What we want to do is keep people moving fast throughout the life cycle of their applications. So we've developed these lanes, and these are not the only lanes, but in Triple O, these are the lanes 
that we think are the most important. And this probably needs a little updating. It's been a while since we developed this slide. But what you have are the jobs that each tool in a deployment of any application, but especially OpenStack, are doing. So here you have Nova. Nova's job is to provision your computer, compute resources to, to sort of give them all a single place, a VM or maybe even a container in the near future. Uh, but what Nova's job isn't is to install software. And intrinsically, we know that. Uh, but if you look at some of the other deployment tools, if you're not using OpenStack, if you're just working on a rack of hardware, uh, you might use a MAS or a Crowbar, and they're going to they're gonna bleed over into software because actually it feels easy. It gets you fast, going faster if your provisioning system also injects the OS and gets involved with configuring packages because, oh, well, drivers and things like that. When we use things like a cloud, we use Nova. Nova provisions the hardware, and then it just hands a dumb stream of bits called an image off to the, off to the hardware. Software delivery then needs to come from somewhere else. It needs to come from the image building tool. So we built a little tool called Disk Image Builder. If you look at uh, my, my diagrams there, you'll see, you know, Puppet will do this, right? You'll say, I want these packages, or I want this OS. And, and, and all the tools kind of bleed out into those. Disk Image Builder delivers software. It does not do anything for you at runtime. That's the job of OS Supply Config, which does very, very simple just configuration of tools. It's basically a translator from your orchestration system and from your static configuration onto the configuration that your software expects. OS Supply Config will not do anything else for you, and that's very important. And then we have a state management tool, which is the simplest piece of triple O. I think it's less than 200 lines of code with tests. OS Refresh Config. All this does is take your system through a change in state, pre-configuration, configuration, post-configuration, post and then if there's anything to do after that change, a migration space. And then we have orchestration, which is by far the most complex thing I think we've taken on in Triple O, and it still needs the most work. We're doing it with heat. But if you look at this, there's a lot of tools out there that people are used to using, developing applications. Some of these are fantastic. The last point to make on this slide is that by making sure that we stay in one lane, we can test what that thing does, and then we can push that tool out, and you can make use of it for that one job without adopting all of the other Triple O tools. So these are all the components I've just mentioned. There's some other things that have come along with Triple O. What we do in Triple O and what we think you could do with any cloud application is define a deployment. So Heat works at a declarative mode. I say to Heat, I want these servers, I want these networks, I want these images, I want this storage. Make it so or tell me why you can't. That's the model that Heat uses. Uh, it needs to get better at it, and we'll be actually driving a lot of features into that this week here at the summit. Um, but it only is going to do that through the APIs exposed through OpenStack. Now, there's a, certainly a possibility that we could talk to other APIs. People have asked us before, like, you know, could you talk to MAS, Metal as a Service? Could you talk to these other things directly? Absolutely. And Heat has a pluggable model. But Heat's job is to declare that this is the end goal and make that happen. So one of the things that's important about that is you could adopt heat right now. And in fact, our friend Evan here in the audience uh, ha has done so without uh, adopting uh, all of the rest of Triple O. Um, just to, to drive that kind of a model, it's a, it's a powerful model to be able to just declare, I, I want servers, I want these things. Uh, you can then keep your puppet, keep your chef. In fact. Because Heat was adapted from CloudFormation, Heat actually ends up supporting most of the other common configuration management tools. Or you could adopt some of the other small tools. Same thing with Golden Images. There's, a, there's an old commonly held belief that Golden Images are, are problematic. That, uh, and part of that is that we didn't have good tools for managing them. But now we have OpenStack, right? We have Glance. Uh, it, it's simple, and that's a good thing. And it's growing capabilities to manage metadata and to, to group things. And if you look at what Murano is trying to drive uh, into Glance, now you'll have your images, your heat templates, your Murano orchestration stuff all together in a, in a catalog of objects. That's the kind of virtuous circle that we've tried to drive with, with Triplo and that we definitely see. So getting back with golden images, now you have a good tool for managing your golden images. 
And the benefit of having golden images is that when you go back to that testing flow, where everything needs to come from a change all the way into production, your golden image doesn't change through that entire process. The software that you deliver to the machine is the software that ends up running on the machine. So if we can keep that, that principle together, your, all your other tools become much simpler because they don't have to deal with all these changes of software state, anything like that. And then we've sort of uh, belovedly you know, named these tools OS-something config. So OS star config, you'll hear that sometimes in our discussions. These are all these little tools. We've actually just grown a new one, which is OS cloud config. But these are these little tools that just do one job. So we started with OS refresh config, which was just to, to manage restarting services. And then we needed to write config files, so we, we made OS apply config. And then we needed to manage, we need to be able to update those in an ongoing manner from different sources like the EC2 metadata service. So we wrote OS collect config. Each one of these ties in and has a very specific integration point. For instance, OS apply config knows how OS collect config saves data. It has some knowledge of it, but it's just JSON files. So you can write another tool. You don't have to use OS collect config to use OS apply config. You can write another tool that just writes out JSON files with your configuration data and then run OS apply config and then you'll get a nice templated experience. The new one, OS cloud config, actually is, is specifically designed to drive anything via the API in, that you need to do in an initial configuration of OpenStack. So if you have deployed your OpenStack software, it's kind of empty. It, it needs to have some keystone administrators and it needs to have some networks involved, default gateways, things like that. Everything that you can define via the API, OS Cloud Config can drive in. And if you're, if you're really paying attention, you'll say, well, wait, Heat does things via the APIs. But there's a, there's a bit of a, uh, an inception problem there where uh, you, you're going to configure Heat using Heat with Heat. It, you know, it just gets a little too circular. So OS Cloud Config is a bootstrap tool. Just like any other good bootstrap tool, it unrolls the loop just for that first step. We also have nice performance with all these tools, uh, building images. Uh, traditionally may not be uh, the fastest thing that people have seen, uh, but uh, we've got it down to just a few minutes. Uh, it depends on what you do. If you want to build a really, really big image, for instance, our, when we build Tripolo's uh, OpenStack controller, where we basically put everything but the kitchen sink, basically everything but Nova Compute onto one image, that maybe takes 10 minutes, maybe 15. The idea is that you can go fast. If you have a change from a developer and you need to push it out, there's this temptation. This is the easy path again to go, I'm just going to send out a patch, a binary patch. I'm just going to ask get upgrade or yum update that server because I don't have time to build an image. It's not really an acceptable paradigm. If you're really holding strong to continuous delivery, you want it to go through the same, the same machinery as every other change. So by using golden images, by making them fast to build, and making them fast to deploy, that should work. Now, deploying them is a sore spot for us in that we, we use Ironic and uh, sometimes Nova Bare Metal. We're, we're transitioning to Ironic, which is our hardware layer. Uh, but we can send out over a 10 gig ne network a 3 gig image in very, very little time. That's, that's a fast thing. We're actually faster than the disks that we're writing to usually. We want to get faster. We've been thinking about this, and oftentimes you're booting 10 servers. We should be able to do something like, not necessarily BitTorrent itself, but like BitTorrent, where we do a scatter gather and have them all update themselves. And that's not a new idea. System Imager has been doing that for years, but we want to actually have it driven by the OpenStack API. So that's all I have on, on these tools. All of these tools are a part of the OpenStack ecosystem. They're part of the official deployment program of OpenStack. And the idea is that if you, if you see a need that you have that one of these fulfills, they would pick them up, try to use them, and, and contribute back to them if you, if you want at least open bugs. And, and that improves not only deployment of OpenStack through Triple but it also improves just the general application ecosystem around OpenStack because what we want to try and think of OpenStack as is not special. It's not a special application. It's just a really big, complicated application that happens to want to run on bare metal servers. So we want people to get involved with that. And uh, if you want to, uh, I missed this on my slides, but um, there's hash triple O in, uh, on the Freenode IRC network. 
Um, we are also, as I said, the official OpenStack deployment program. Uh, you can also contact me directly, uh, clint.byram at hp.com, or also our PTL, who's uh, um, Robert Collins, uh, Robert dot, or rbtcollins at hp.com. That's all I have, so thank you very much.